Please support The Bar by like, subscribe, and sharing my casts. Follow my social media at Facebook, Instagram, Gab, Parlor, BitChute, YouTube, DLive, Twitch, CloudHub, and Rumble. Or join my subscribe star. Make a donation by clicking on the links on the description box. I am a listener-supported show, so any of the above is greatly appreciated. Help me grow and spread the truth since the mainstream media obviously does not want to support truth. All links are listed on the description box. God bless you and enjoy. Welcome to the Speak Uneasy, a safe space where cancel culture does not exist because we are in a different prohibition era. Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Speak Uneasy and I am the bartender as usual for the night. So tonight's random read is going to come off of the book of Nehemiah. This is going to be in chapter 1 verse 1 through verse 3. News from Jerusalem. The words of Nehemiah the son of Hachiliah and it came to pass in the month Chislu in the 20th years as I was in Shushan the palace that Hanani one of my brethren came he and certain men of Judah and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem and they said unto me the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Once again, that comes from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 3, news from Jerusalem. And now my interpretation of this or my or the message that that's clearly coming from God um, the the stuff that we're going through right now in this country is a good uh, example of what that read just just um, explained because it kind of does feel that we're in ca- captivity with all these lockdowns and all these things going on and um, I guess it's a warning it's a warning that you know God is giving us that's that's what I can take from this I mean I that's all I got but you know like like any other um, read that I have on Mondays you can interpret that how you want it. But in a way where God is talking to you, whether it be in your life or whatever current event is happening. So that would be, that's a short random read. And honestly, there's really not much to interpret from that, from from me at least. But it does kind of remind me of us being locked down here as prisoners as those people were. So that's my interpretation. Now, on to the uh, cocktail tonight. So tonight, I'm making a continuation from the cocktail I made last week, which was Remember the Main. So tonight, we're going to make a cocktail called To Hell with Spain. Um, so a little... As far as the history goes, I've already read the history of Remember the Main because the other part of that saying was to hell with Spain. 
I've already read the history of that particular story. Okay. So I found this article pertaining to this um, cocktail to help with Spain. And it comes from cocktailchronicles.com. And this was written back in December 7th, 2011 by this guy named Paul. There's no last name to it. Um, the title of the article reads, A Drink at Vito's in Seattle and a Correction. Over the past few years at Imbibe, I've had the chance to write about the cocktail situation in Las Vegas and San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Vancouver. But it wasn't until the current issue, which appeared in mailboxes last month, hey, I've been busy, that I finally had the opportunity or the excuse to officially roll through many of the craft cocktail bars in my hometown of Seattle. The November slash December issue is still available on the shelf. Or if you need to read the Seattle piece right now, there's a link. Okay. One of the drawbacks of these kinds of stories is that I never have enough space to fully recognize some of the more noteworthy bars and the talented bartenders that I come across. In the print version of the story... I included recipes from Eric Hakkinen at Zigzag Cafe, Eric Carlson at Moshi Moshi, and Jay Kuhner at Sambar. But these are only a few of the bartenders who have made Seattle into the city it is today. A soggy, Ramazzotti soaked destination for the cocktail enthusiast and or the discerning in Nebrate. But what do you know? I have a blog, a little rusty from recent disuse, but as far as I can tell, still functional. So over the next week or so, emphasis on the or so, I'm going to run a few notes and recipes from bars and bartenders I have mentioned in an article but didn't have the chance to fully recognize. First on this mini tour of Seattle bars is a place that I've visited, that I first visited not long after I moved to Seattle in 1998. Vito's on First Hill. Vito's has been around since the 1950s and the decor, the decor seems to hardly have changed since its debut. Don't believe me? Check out the cougar room in the back. In the late 90s, Vito was a fun, if slightly down-at-heel kind of place to spend a Saturday night. More recently, the bar had a run of bad luck, and the memories it inspired started trending to the I almost got shot there variety. Oh, okay, one of those type of places. But last year, new owners started cleaning up the place keeping the non-ironic retro furniture and the edge of downtown aura to the place. But spiffling spiffing up the menu and the music and just generally getting Vito's vibe and clientele back into more or less respectable territory. Even better, at least from a cocktail geek's perspective, the bar's booze selection was seriously rethought. Sure, you can still get a can of Ollie and a shot of well whiskey at the bar, but Vito's is reflecting its Italian influence with more than just an, just the eggplant parm, bottles of Italian aperifrits, spirits and liquors such as Zucca Ribarbaro, Strega and Barolo Canacinato. Now populate the bar ba- the back bar and the bar menu has a serious drink geek's touch with cocktails such as the Waldol, Waldorf and Statler made with gin, falernum and Fernet Branca. 
the akimbo, a rye campari and barolo chinato drink, not on the current menu, but worthy of a return engagement. And the Tom Handy, a Sazerac interpretation made with Britain House Rye and Remy, VSOP, spiced with the bitter truth Creole bitters. The drinks take an East Coast spirit forward approach, and this winter Vito's is even serving Smith and Cross fueled Tom and Jerry's, the first regular appearance of these I've seen in a Seattle bar. Still, Vito's is not immune from misfortune, as is demonstrated by my imbibe story. While I recognize bartenders Jared Scar and Nabil Sharif for their work behind the bar, somewhere in my fuzzy joy at finding the, that Vito's had cleaned up and had taken the craft cocktail pledge, I accidentally gave Jared a promotion to bar manager overlooking the man who's done the most to turn Vito's beverage program around, Justin Girardi. So here, in front of the internet and everybody, I offer my apologies to Justin as a testament to the, skull, to the skill of Vito's bar staff. I, I offer you one of the establishment's original drinks, developed by barman Connor O'Brien, and named by Girardi, to hell with Spain. Remember the main to hell with Spain. Get the connection? This is Remember the Main's smoky Scottish cousin, with the PD complexity supplied both by the newish Johnny Walker Double Black, which carries an extra payload of Isle malt in its blend and by a touch of Lafroig, just to keep the fire burning. Cherry herring, carpano, and absinthe are burly enough characters to take a little smoke in stride, and the result is a powerfully flavored, rich, alluring cocktail. As Girardi says, I tend to be most interested in a drink that references its ingredients rather than tries to redefine those flavors. When you do that, some of the reverence for that is lost. No worries of anything getting lost in this mix. It's one I'll come back to, especially as the season gets darker and colder. So that was an article that I found about To Hell With Spain. Uh, and mind you, I'm probably not going to use the exact same um, ingredients for the uh, drink itself. I've got different types of scotches, and and we'll see. So let's go ahead and start with um, let's go ahead and start with uh, pouring two ounces of lightly peated scotch. Now for that, I have the famous Grouse Smoky Black. It's compared to what I'm going to use as the heavily speed, the heavily peated scotch. This is a lot more lighted scotch, so we'll pour two ounces of this. Okay, I just put two ounces of, um, quote, lightly peated scotch. Now we're going to go ahead and pour half an ounce of sweet vermouth. And for that, I have my Rivata sweet vermouth. Pour uh, half an ounce of that. Okay. Next, I have uh, cherry liqueur. We're going to pour about a quarter ounce of cherry liqueur. And for that, I have uh, my Luxardo Cherry Sangi Morlaco liqueur. And we'll put 25 ounces of that. Okay. 
Just make sure I get that measurement right. All right. Now we're going to put 25 ounces of heavily peated scotch. And for that, I have my Bowmore 12 year. Okay. This is an ILA scotch. And uh, the peat on this. Oh, yeah. This has a lot more peat than that black grouse does. So we're going to put 25. We're going to put a quarter ounce of uh, heavily peated scotch in there. All right, put that in the mixing glass. Now, right now I have my, um, I have a, I have a martini glass that's being chilled right now, okay? We're going to go ahead and add ice into our uh, mixing glass here. go ahead and stir we're gonna make uh, we're gonna stir to dilution because to be honest if we were to drink this with not a good stir I can tell already that this is gonna be such a, a smoky drink and we want to be able to get the flavors of the sweet vermouth and cherry liqueur and not uh, not have it covered by the uh, heavily peated scotch and well, just have we don't want to have a heavily peated flavor to this because I've you know I've included light peated scotch and heavily peated scotch, so we're gonna go ahead and keep stirring this up. We're gonna keep stirring. Sorry about that. I had to grab my glass. We're going to keep stirring. Round and round, the booze goes into the glass as we stir it up. Okay, so we've stirred that up. And now, it says here to put three dashes of absinthe. Well, here's, here's a little thing that I've done. I put some absinthe inside of a um, a spray. So instead of having me put droplets of uh, absinthe into this, I'm going to spray my glass. I've already dumped the water and ice out of the glass. I'm going to spray the glass itself three times. So I've given that three sprays. And now we're going to pour the cocktail. Here we go. So the color of the cocktail is very, it's very uh, dark, dark amber, dark brown. And now we're going to take a maraschino cherry and plop it in there. And my cherry is in there. There we have it. The cocktail is made to hell with Spain. Now for the moment, the taste. The taste. Here we go. Cheers.
Oh, wow. You, you know what's cool about this? The moment you 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 sip it, you get you get a taste of the peat, the peated scotch. But as the drink goes more like as you drink it, the peat disappears. It just completely disappears. And you can taste the flavor of the sweet vermouth and of the cherry liqueur. The absinthe gives it, I don't know, maybe it's the absinthe that kind of dissolves that peat taste to the scotch. Because all I, all, after drinking that, all I can taste as far as the aftertaste is, is the uh, cherry liqueur and the sweet vermouth. So it gives it like a fruity tone. Wow, that's that's interesting. So another thing that I noticed too that when I raise the glass up to my mouth, and since I spray the glass with absinthe, you get this liquor, this like licorice uh, smell on the nose. And as you drink, The peat slightly gets in there, then all of a sudden it just disappears, and all you get is fruit after that. So that's a, that's a pretty cool um, cocktail. Once again, uh, the cocktail is called "To Hell with Spain." Cheers! And now for the show. All right. So um, first up on the agenda for today. Uh, Uh, I went, I went on this website called uh, Stupid Dot News, and um, I just like to be entertained about what kind of um, crazy stuff is going on in the news. So um, the article that the article that caught my attention today, tonight, um, is written by Ethan Huff, uh, and the article reads. Pennsylvania warns that attending an orgy without a mask is unsafe. <laughs> All right. The Pennsylvania Department of Health released a, a news guideline recently that warned residents against attending orgies during the Wuhan Corona, the Charlie 19 pandemic. Not necessarily because the sex part is risky, mind you but because some attendees might not be wearing a mask. <laughs> In the event that Pennsylvanians still decide to attend sex parties during the national emergency, which the PDH says is a normal part of life, and to be expected the best thing swingers can do to protect themselves is to mask up while doing the dirty, as this is the most effective way to avoid contracting or spreading the coof. During this extended public health emergency, consider utilizing risk redu reduction strategies to protect your health and the health of your sex partner or sex partners, the PDH instructs. Whenever meeting up with someone who whenever meeting with someone for sex who is outside of your household, the PDH suggests that the first topic of conversation be Charlie Victor 19 risk factors, <laughs> such as not being six feet apart from others at all times and not wearing a mask. Ask partners outside your home about Charlie Victor 19 status before you meet and engage in sex. The guidelines further state do they have symptoms or have they had symptoms in the last 14 days? Most people with Charlie Victor 19 have symptoms, but some people do not. The PDH also advises Pennsylvanians to risk their various sex partners if they have been diagnosed with Charlie Victor 19 using a nasal swab 
also known as a nose javelin or saliva test. For more related news about the Wuhan Charlie Victor 19, be sure to check out pandemic.news. Make sure to wash your hands before and after group sex to cure Charlie Victor 19, says Pennsylvania. If you simply cannot help yourself and have to attend an orgy in Pennsylvania, <laughs> or as the PDH puts it, if you attend a large gathering where you might end up having sex, the public health agency advises that you limit the number of partners and try to identify a consistent sex partner. No matter who you have sex with during the pandemic, always wear a face covering, <laughs> the PDH says, and avoid kissing unless you wash your hands before and after sex. The PDH also advises that sex party attendees do not touch their eyes, nose, or mouth. Wash your hands with soap and water often, and especially before and after sex. The PDH further advises suggesting that people take sex breaks <laughs> to wash off any lingering virus. If soap and water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Those who normally meet their orgy partners online are being advised to consider taking a break from in-person dates and instead resort to video dates, sexting, subscription-based fan platforms or chat rooms just in case people who actually read the pdh website missed it the first time the public health agency reiterates towards the end to avoid kissing while having a sex party because kissing can easily pass the virus the pdh also emphasizes a second time that wearing a face covering or mask is essentially is essential during an orgy. <laughs> Back in the summer, the Canadian government issued a similar directive telling Canadians who like to have random anonymous sex to always wear a face covering when having sex with strangers. Men who believe they are women lecturing society on anything, let alone sexuality and health, is laughable, wrote one citizen free press commenter about Pennsylvania Health Secretary Rachel Levine, the nation's first openly transgender public health secretary. There are and will only be two sexes, period, wrote another, Adding that science deny, adding that a science denier like Levine has no right to lecture us about anything. <laughs> All right, I, I, I don't know, I don't know where to go with this. I mean, I do know where to go with this, um, but I don't know how to start off to where to go with this. Okay, um, first off, uh. So you're naked, but you have, I mean, bodily fluids are okay, but uh, uh, breathing or, so I don't know, uh, saliva is going to be of concern uh, when you're doing it, as opposed to possibly catching some kind of um, sexually transmitted disease. Uh, you know, it's funny that they didn't even say to wear a condom or, you know, any kind of protection. <laughs> you know what? Uh, this has gone way too far. This, this, the stupidity of government agencies telling us how to live our lives has gone off the end they they've gone they've gone off the they've gone off the edge of a cliff and it does not make sense anymore to me it really doesn't um 
What do you do with this? Well, I don't, you know, I do not partake in orgies myself. Um, I've seen, you know, of course, you know, I've seen videos of stuff like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, people. I I don't know where. <laughs> you know, this year has been <laughs> this has been a very difficult year for everybody. Okay, this <laughs> is. Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay. okay. What do you? <laughs> you know what? I'm just picturing this. Okay, so um, <laughs> uh, I, I, this, this what an opener for today, huh? <laughs> okay, so so you're having sex with somebody, right? And uh. Uh, you know, one of the things is having oral sex too, right? So you, that it doesn't happen. You just don't, you don't do that now. I mean, that's one of the, <laughs> you do it through the mask. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just a picture. Okay. Just think about it. You know, you, 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 everything is off, right? All your clothes are off and you have this thing in your face. And I'm not talking about any um, sexual organs. I'm talking about the mask. You have this thing on your face while you're doing it. Can you picture that? How sexy does that look to you? Huh? Shrinkage, maybe, guys, fellas, maybe a little bit of shrinkage, huh? I mean, what do you do? Well, if, if people are going to do it, they're going to do it. They're not going to wear the mask. I think, I think, I think a good majority of us, as much as I want to, I, okay, as much as I want to believe that the mass majority of people, know that this is all BS. They know in their gut that this is BS, okay? I, I want to believe that. As much as my mind tells me that, as much as my mind and my eyes tell me that a lot of people haven't caught on to this is BS yet, my gut wants to tell me that a lot of people think this is BS, right? So, people who attend these... <laughs> People who attend these things, right? Do, do you do you actually do you actually think they're gonna uh, they're gonna um, abide by this, right? Naked, and then this thing on their face. You think you th you actually think that's gonna happen? What's what's so attractive about that? You know, one of the joys of having sex, right? And for me, you know, and this could be for a lot of people as well. But one of the joys of, of having an intimate time with somebody, um, you know, whether it's somebody you love or maybe it's just a hookup or one of those things is facial expressions for me. OK, um, that's that turns me on when I see that I'm doing something right to my, you know, to my, my female partner. I want to be able to know that I'm do I'm, I'm doing it right. Okay, and having this thing cover half of your face is not an attractive thing at all. I wouldn't even be able to perform to my peak if half of uh, my female partner's face was covered with this ridiculous thing. 
you know, maybe some people might have fetishes for that. Like, I don't know, um, like cosplay or stuff like that. You know, I, I, I don't know too much about that. I, I don't know too much about it. It's just stuff that I hear from people talk about, but, um, I guess you can, I, I, yeah. Okay, imagine with my imagination just being out there, right? I guess you can pretend that you're some kind of doctor and nurse, and but honestly, I, I, I can't see, I can't see the deed being done with this thing on your face. It's, it's not attractive to me, right? Uh, like I said, part of it for me, and I'm pretty sure for the a great majority of people who have sex is facial expressions. Because I don't know, I, I I get turned on from facial expressions as much as I do with 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 you know just by the physical look of of a of a of a beautiful female, right? Sometimes even the words that the female says turns me on. Well, I'm not gonna say sometimes. I'm gonna say all the time because that's that's what I like. I like to I, I like the communication while while doing it, and part of the communication is facial expressions so uh you know <laughs> the priority level of these people who who head these agencies i don't know where the hell they came from you know uh how about not having multiple partners uh so you can prevent the spread of sec- a sexually transmitted disease i don't know how about that message, right? I mean, if they think that everybody's just going to do it anyway, why even bother to make us wear all a mask and all that when a lot of us don't even want to? Well, I don't. I don't want to wear a mask anymore. From day one, I didn't even want to. But unfortunately, I don't know what it is about people. I really don't. Um, and I know I'm coming, I'm, 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 I'm touching a different topic here with the with the whole muzzle thing because that's what it is it's 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 a muzzle let's be let's be real about this okay this has nothing to do with uh preventing spread because at the job that I work with right multiple people multiple people have caught have caught it and they wear masks so the truth of the matter is it don't prevent it doesn't prevent anything at all. The mask it surely doesn't prevent anything at all. It's 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 a physical form of control, right? It's a muzzle. They've been attacking a lot of broadcasters with free speech um issues on platforms such as YouTube, um Twitter, so who's to say that this muzzle is not a a direct sign of control? I look at it as it's control for you to shut the you know what up. And I bet you that these people on the top, they're laughing at us. They're laughing at the general public because they're buying it. Hook, line, and sinker. They're buying it. And like I, you know, I, I've I've mentioned this before on my last show, right? I'm all for the patriot movement. I'm all for the whole great awakening. I am all for it. But do not make statements saying that we're the majority. When my eyes tell me something different, because if we were truly the majority, I would see a majority of people out there not wearing the muzzle. But. Everybody, everybody that I see, they're all wearing the muzzle. And I bet you there, there are going to be stupid freaks who actually do this, who actually will abide to attending an orgy, being naked, but have that stupid thing on their face. I'm convinced that there are, there will be people that will do that. They might not be a big majority of people that go to orgies, but I guarantee you that there will be people that will where their priorities will all be messed up. So, what an opener for today, huh? 
an orgy with a mask on. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Thank you. The Pennsylvania Department of Health. Thank you so much. All right. Now, now uh, another article that I want to um, break down here. Um, I... Okay, so let me let me before I even get into this article. Let me let me um let me start by saying that I don't care about what people uh do in their private lives. I don't care what people believe in, okay? <clears throat> when it becomes a problem is when people start pushing when they start pushing what they believe in to other people to convince them to, to, to make them change, okay? And mind you that <clears throat> the reason why I started a podcast is because people have choices. So they have the choice whether or not to listen to me. And if you listen to me, cool. You're pretty open-minded or we have the same, we have the same, um, we have the same thinking, right? Um, maybe you want to get entertained, but regardless of what it is you have the choice to decide whether or not you want to listen to me right <clears throat> and it should be like that across the board with everything it should be even though you don't agree with people you know um you may present your argument and the other person may present their argument and from there you you, you know you, you your your beliefs either change or they don't right that's what conversations do with with other people that you don't necessarily you don't necessarily have the same agreement with but it sparks conversation because you know as people we always we always want to find a middle ground for us to to get along right but some cases we it, it just doesn't get to a point where you don't get along and you just leave it at that and you go your separate ways but anyways I want to start off by saying I don't care what people do in their personal lives. I don't care what they choose um, as to what they want to identify as. I don't care. Okay, I I, I don't care. I may not I may not um, agree with what you do in your life, but that you know that that's none of my business. That's none of my business. Okay, nor should anything that you disagree with, with me should be any of your business cuz it's not it doesn't involve you okay so i wanted to start off by saying something you know by saying that because some of you may have different views or different diff, just yeah just different views about what i think about about um like homosexuality or transgenderism or whatever it is that you want to identify as I don't agree with it, but I judge people for their character. And if we click, it doesn't matter what you do in your private life or what you identify as. If we click, we're good, right? We're good. But just don't force your beliefs onto me and I won't, I won't force my beliefs onto you. We may have conversations about our differences, but it's up to us to learn from each other whether whether we want to change the way we think or not so that's my disclaimer to this next <laughs> this next uh article that you know i want to break down okay so this one comes from socialjustice.news and the article is written by ethan huff again Mentally ill trans activist says all children need puberty blockers until they're able to consent to puberty. <clears throat> okay. Um, obviously, this person does not believe in science. Okay. Because, the, I mean, what do you... You're going to delay... <clears throat> you're going to delay something natural from, from nature because of what your sexual gratification is? That, that, okay, so, so, <clears throat> on face value, just by reading that, just by reading that open liner, 
the title of, of the article, that sounds very selfish to me. That sounds very selfish to me because apparently when you say consent, you're obviously, you're obviously saying consent to having sex, right? So obvious, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously your desire to have sex with, 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 uh, with kids is a lot more important for science to take its course and have kids grow the way they grow. So you want to inject all these drugs or whatever it is to prevent these kids from, from developing naturally because, because of your desire for sexual pleasures with children. And this is, this is how I'm perceived. Uh, this is my translation in my brain to just the title of this. Um, this is what I'm thinking. Okay. This has no, this is it. I'm basing this off of all of my um, opinion, okay? Um, because, well, puberty is a part of nature, right? It's part of child development from a child to a young adult. That's what puberty is, right? Am I wrong with that? No, I'm not wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. That's science, right? That's that's what every human being goes through, whether you're a male or a female. And again, yes, I do believe that there's only two genders, male and female. Um, that's my belief. That's what science has pointed out. And I will continue to uh, believe that <clears throat> unless there's some kind of hybrid human out there that I don't know that that scientists have made. Then you show me and then you prove things. Then from there, I may be able to expand that there are more than two genders out there. But for now, as far as I know, there's only male and there's only female. But anyways, let me get to this article. OK, and see the mindset of this person. <clears throat> A drag queen that calls itself the queen of atheism. There you go. Atheism. There's no God in their life, okay? Wants children everywhere to be forced to take puberty blocking, blocking pharmaceuticals from birth until they reach some unknown age of consent, okay? At which time they can decide for themselves which gender identity to embrace. Zinnia Jones, a blue checkmark verified Twitter user who was born with the name Zachary Antolak, says that mandating puberty blockers for children... Mandating? Mandating. Okay. Uh, you guys are getting this, like, live... I'm reading this live. I've never read this article. I just... I just glimpsed at the, the uh, title of the article and thought it would be an interesting read, but I'm reading this for the first time ever, and you're going to get reactions from me um, the way that a normal people, uh, 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 I'm sorry, a normal person would when they first read something like this, okay? I have a problem with this. Mandated. I have a problem with this. Even if the parents had the choice to uh do this to their child i have i have problems with that because now you're messing with nature now you're messing with god's creation but then again this person is called queen of atheism right so there's no god i feel sorry for people who don't believe in god you know i i really don't but i'm not going to push that on them because they're going to have to realize that one point of their life. I'll give, I will say what my beliefs are, right? Because we all, we all have something to say. And the, the way we advance as a human race is to listen to everybody. So then we can determine, you know, what, what stuff holds substance in order for us to advance as a human race. But this, I see this, this whole thing with with this um and I know this I, I stopped mid article. I know I didn't, but you know, I I have to say it because I'm I'm gonna forget. You know, I'm 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 gonna forget things that I'm gonna say. But <clears throat> I honestly think this whole trans um gender thing and it's all 
to destroy um it's all to destroy the human race because you won't you know you're you're pushing you're pushing for not reproducing with the opposite sex that's pretty much what it is you know it's another form of pop- population control but you know i but that's my opinion you don't have to believe that but honestly how is a man and a man going to make a, a child how right i mean sperm doesn't fertilize sperm i don't i don't know egg doesn't fertilize egg i mean how does that work i don't know i don't know so let me continue okay let me start from that paragraph again. Zinia Jones, a blue checkmark verified Twitter user who was born with the name Zachary Antolak, says that mandating puberty blockers for children is an optimal way to ensure their proper development. How does... how? Gosh. By preventing parents, doctors, and other transphobic people from assigning babies a gender identity based on biological reality rather than lgbtq delusion more children will opt for a sex change later in life which is jones apparent mission in life and i totally disagree with that Um, you don't see a bunch of kids nowadays trying to change what their gender is this is all a delusion in this people's in this person's mind for one, he, this person can't even figure out whether he's a male or female. <laughs> As we have reported many times in the past, LGBTQ's apparent, uh, I'm sorry, LGBTQ's patent, patently reject natural biology, which is true. They do. Uh, from uh, mo- Not all of them, okay? Okay. Uh, a lot of them uh, who are good people just probably feel that they're more attracted to the same sex, okay? Um, But people who are like way out there uh, who they do reject uh, the natural biology. Instead, preferring to create their own fantasy reality, which is in which gender is just another social construct that can easily be undone and abolished through policy changes and aggressive activism. Many of them are also pedophiles. I mentioned something like that. I think I did. Uh, Which explains their creepy fixation on innocent children. Right. Okay, so if I have not... If I haven't... If I haven't mentioned it before... I am not calling them all pedophiles. Okay. Obviously, this person can possibly be a pedophile, right? And I'm only saying that because the the way I'm saying it, I kind of have to watch what I say because people get so offended by by things now. J- you know, people get so offended easily. So I have to be smart in what, how I say things. So this person can possibly be a pedophile, right? Only because, and this is this is where I came to this conclusion, okay? This person seems to be so fixated in a child's natural development. Uh, This person's priority is more of fulfilling a sexual desire than to have a kid's natural uh, natural, um, ability of growing. If that makes any sense, I may not be, I may not be articulate as to what I'm trying to describe. Okay, so let let's put it this way. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can get my message across here. If if it didn't come out right. So in my opinion, right, my opinion, this is not based on facts or whatever. This is just what I think. Just based on what this person um, is pushing for. This person's sexual desire is more important than a child's natural way to develop as an adult. Okay. That's what I was trying to get across. Okay. I'm going to continue with the article. 
If children can't consent to puberty blockers, which pause any permanent changes, even with the relevant professional evaluation, how can they consent to a, the permanent and irreversible changes that come with their own puberty with no professional evaluation whatsoever? Jones tweeted the other day. Jones, a biological male <laughs> who now self-identifies as a trans woman, runs a blog where she advocates for forcibly castrating forcibly that's the key word forcibly castrating the innocent with chemicals in order to prevent them from developing into either boys or girls jones would prefer that all humans exist as genderless avatars until a time when they are able to choose which gender they would like to become i have no problems with you uh having that kind of um, opinion about how the world should be because, you know, everybody has a different opinion. Opinion. That's the key word. Opinion. Right? Not how things should be, but an idea of what they should be based on your opinion. Okay? You can go ahead and think that way if you want to. But the, nature is going to do what nature does. Right? It's going to continue to do what it does. And you can't fight that. Oh, gosh. On Twitter, Jones calls itself an adult demon female. Wow. That explains a lot right there. You deny God, but yet you welcome the devil in. That explains a lot about where you're at in your life. And, you know, that's why you are the way you are. The devil loves to confuse people. The devil confuses people. And regularly tweets hateful messages aimed at those who embrace natural biology. In Jones' world, tampering with children's natural hormones is perfectly normal and something to celebrate. And if you don't like it, then you're a transphobe. Why do they always, rev I mean, why do they always have to uh, call you some kind of hate epithet? Like they make it seem because you don't agree with it that you automatically are a hater. No, I just, you know, I don't agree with it. That's all. I mean, you know, I, I, that doesn't necessarily mean I hate you. That just means that I don't agree. I, I don't agree with what you do in your life or what you think the world is. We all are diff We all are different people. Okay. We don't all. We're not all factory built. We're not all made the same. Some people are shorter and uh, sh some people are short. Some people are tall. Some people have black hair. Some people have blonde hair. Some people have brown eyes. Some people have blue eyes. Some are men. Some are women. Some are fat, some are slim. You know, uh, not all of us are going to be happy with who we are physically. But sometimes we can change that, sometimes we can't. That's just the way life is. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get this. I, 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 I really don't get this. I don't get it. You know, because you don't agree with me, then everything is wrong. No. Oh, gosh. Ugh. NATO puberty became optional the moment technology became available to enable deliberate choice between natal puberty and puberty induced by cross-sex hormones. Jones wrote in another tweet from December 4th. It became a choice when it became a choice. And I am pro I am really profoundly sorry if you cannot understand that. And you know what? You, uh, I'm not going to understand that. Because you and I have different thoughts in our head. What you may think is logical may not be logical to me and vice versa. So don't hate on me because I don't agree with what you think the world should be. Or who you think you should be. 
Don't hate me because I think differently. It's like what I said earlier. Everybody is different. We're all created in the image of God. And if you want to go ahead and destroy yourself because you're not happy with the image God gave you, God gave us free will too. But don't be pulling people in with you who don't necessarily agree with you or call us haters. It's not hate to disagree. By the way, you seem to be the one who can't understand anything to begin with because you can't even understand what you are or who you are. You know, it's like I said, look, I don't care what people do in their personal life or what they identify as or whatever they do. I don't. I don't care about it. Just don't push that stuff onto me. Don't push it onto me because I am never going to, for me, for me as an individual or for my family as a whole, we are not going to, we are not going to alter our lifestyle to, to accept this if we don't accept it. I don't accept that this is fact. This is all emotionally driven. This is what you feel. And it's it's it's, it's a shame that we all, you know, not we, I'm not going to include myself in that, but it's a shame that a lot of people have become have have come to the conclusion that everything is based on how they feel. That is absolutely wrong. The world don't give two you know what's about anybody. The world will always do what the world does. Nature will always do what it does. And the world don't care about your feelings. It is who of you to adapt to that in order for you to conquer whatever you got in your life that you need to conquer. But as far as how you feel, I don't think anybody cares about how you feel. And I don't think the world I don't think I don't think nature cares either you either adapt you sink or you swim and that should go out through your whole entire I mean that that should you should base that on your on, on your on life itself as growing up you know you either sink or you swim you make your own destiny yes but don't don't think that everybody's going to stop and care because of because of you that's not the way the world works i've accepted that the whole world's not going to stop for me because of how i feel you just keep going on doing what you do i just keep going on doing what i do nobody cares about anybody's feelings and fact and feelings are two different things We need to get off this freaking um, emotional bus. You know, I don't know when this got introduced to to people. I I, I seriously don't. And um, <clears throat> nobody cared about you know about shit that I've been through. And to this point, nobody cares about shit that I go through. The only person that cares about that is myself, because I need to make myself push through whatever blockade I got in my life. And the only one controlling that is myself. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to stop what I'm doing and take a pause and say, Oh, I need some kind of emotional, uh, this and that. No, man, you, you push through it and you make it work. You don't base things on how you feel. If you did there, you would, people would never go, people would never advance forward in their life. If they based everything on how they felt, how can you, how can you progress? How does that make you strong? <laughs> how you feel, give a damn about how you feel. Nobody cares about how I feel. And I've, I've accepted that a long time ago. Like, nobody cares how I feel. I've accepted that. I don't care. I mean, nobody cares. So all of a sudden, people have to stop their world because of you, how you feel? <laughs> Give me a break. All 
British Supreme Court ruled that children are ill-equipped to give informed consent concerning a sex change. Jones's tweet storm was prompted by a recent decision out of the United Kingdom where the Supreme Court ruled that children under the age of 16 are unlikely to be able to give informed consent <clears throat> concerning the use of puberty blockers. Jones became triggered. <laughs> these key words, man. Where the hell did these words come from? Jones became triggered because, again, this atheist drag queen wants all children to, children to have their hormones blocked the moment they exit the womb. It is highly unlikely that a child age 13 or under would be competent to give consent to the administration of puberty blockers, the court added in its decision. It is doubtful that a child aged 14 or 15 could understand and weigh the long-term risks and consequences of the administration of puberty blockers. As to be expected, the entire LGBTQP lobby, the P stands for pedophilia, because honestly, they're trying to normalize that too. If you have not figured that out, they are trying to, they made it, they're making it, they're trying to push this as normal. And the way they do that is to slide it in with this whole community. That community should be pissed off. They should, because nobody, nobody in their right mind would accept that that would be the, a, a good thing to do, right? Is angry about the decision. So is the Tavistock Institute, a pro transgender, a pro transgender think tank organi organization that is expected to pursue an appeal against the UK Supreme Court's decision. Too many crazy people and not enough mental hospitals, wrote one national file commenter about Jones and her anti-child agenda. People across the globe need to shut this crap down where, where, wherever they meet it. Okay. Now, let me give my let me give my opinion on this. And like I said, um I do have friends in that community, the alphabet community, and they're good people. Like uh, they would do anything for you. Right? They would do the right thing. They're like-minded in a way but just because they are attracted to somebody in the same sex i would not brush them off i would brush them off the minute they try to make moves on me that i didn't like and i'm talking about my male you know gay friends or i even have a cousin who's a male uh gay guy and i love my i i love him He's my cousin. I love him, right? My friends too. I love my friends because they're great people. They're the type of people that will be there for you when you need when you need them to be there. I don't judge the guy. I don't judge all of them based on who they sleep with or who they're attracted to. No, I base it on their their character, their personality. What type of person are they? Who they sleep with is none of my concern. I don't care. It's how they treat you. That's the, that's the more important issue here is how they treat you and how they see you as. And another thing about this um, age of consent, and, and I'm going to tell you this based on my experience as a growing teenager. The first time I did it uh, with a female... And I've only done it with a female. <laughs> I'm, I'm as straight as it gets. My first sexual experience with a with a female, and it's all it's always all been with females, is 16. Now, at that age, could I have made a better decision? Yeah, I mean, we all could have. We've all done things that we probably said it's probably best that we have we should have waited or whatever. But but you know, when you're at that age. <clears throat> your hormones are all over the place, especially being a boy, right? 
man, you you you're trying to you're trying to say anything you can say to the girl just to get it. I mean, you go down, you you stoop as low as to saying, "Oh, I love you." Oh, I want to marry you. Just just in order for you to get a piece, right? So, I don't know, um this whole age of consent thing, I do see I I do agree with with yeah, they're not at their right mind to make decisions, but when it comes to something like that when two teenagers are having sex, it's like are they really thinking about long-term stuff? Probably not. They're probably thinking about other things. They're not thinking about their future. They're not thinking about what they want to do in their life, uh, like years ahead. Some of them may have that in them, but but generally speaking, especially boys, man, we if we just want to do it, we will say anything just to do it. And... You know, I'm pretty sure that a lot of dudes out there who listen to this, who's, who's, who, who is trying to do it for the first, I mean, I'm pretty sure they can agree that they would say anything just to do it. <laughs> they would say anything just to do it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's part of growing up, right? I mean, were we, was I at the age of consent? Eh, I don't know. I was 16. I didn't did I care about those kind of laws back then? Probably not. All I was just thinking was damn, dude. You know, uh this is my chance and uh let me see if I can get it. So it was I mean, it's 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 they want to block all this stuff with kids. Like the natural course of nature of how they grow from from a child to an adult. They want to take that away. Some of my greatest moments in my life were in my teenage years, you know? Um I I I fell in love for the first time with with a girl when I was 16. That was the first time I've ever felt felt in love. Well, I thought. I mean, now looking back, I thought I was in love. Right? And I'm pretty sure a lot of dudes will, will 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 agree with me that if you look back now, you thought you were in love, but you probably weren't. It was just you you just wanted to get some. <laughs> you just wanted to get some, right? So that's my opinion on this article. And um, man, people have lost their minds, dude. They have lost their minds into thinking that their sexual desires are a lot more important than a child's normal way to develop. That is crazy. That's I mean, if that doesn't tell you outright, because to me, outright, that tells me that you are a child lover. Like you want to you want to do sexual things to kids. That's what that's telling me. That's where I'm concluding. That's that's my brain. Right. So that's that. I'm going to take a break. And when I come back, um, we'll talk about other stuff. Cheers. And we're back from the break. Okay, so this portion of the show, I found the video on BitChute. And it's titled, Reality Sets In, Restaurant Owner Blocks Health Inspector's Car. And this video is by North Idaho Exposed. Okay. So the synopsis of this video is a restaurant owner opens his restaurant and a health inspector comes in or is trying to get in and shut them down because he's violated opening his restaurant while they're on lockdown. Okay. I mean, that's what I can gather from watching this video. I, I don't know for sure. I don't know what the true situation is here. But but you got this restaurant owner talking to the cops because what this guy did was he blocked his car from the health inspector's car for him to get in to do his so-called job, right? So that's what the situation is. And the cops respond and now the cops are, they have to intervene with this. And they're trying to have the guy move his car because his car is blocking public street. 
and is difficult for other cars to get through. Mind you, this is, I think this is in um, Covina, California. And I'm very familiar with this area right here. Um, I drive by this place all the time. Not the restaurant, but the general area. I, I drive by a lot. And it's like a, uh, it's kind of like a downtown area for Covina. So I'm going to play this, this audio clip. Okay. And just think about what you would do in this situation in all, in all, um, angles. Okay. Whether be it, you're the guy who owns the restaurant or you're the female cop or you're the health inspector. So just give it a think and we'll conclude the show with what I think about the video. So, uh, mind you, the there's going to be there might be some cussing, so I'm just I'm just letting you know that. I'm I'm going to let this video ride, this audio ride as as far as I can. It's about a a 9-minute clip, but uh, I'll let it ride because a lot of things that this guy is saying, the the restaurant owner, is a valid argument. And the choices of words from the female cop may not be the right choice of words, but you get to de- determine that at the end of the clip. So let's go ahead and play this clip. Everyone that wants to come out here and eat, they can't. Everyone that wants to drive down Citrus and visit one of the restaurants, but they can't. This guy needs to know how hard it is. That's what he needs to know. You're out here enforcing, doing your job. Did you get a paycheck on Friday? Did you get a paycheck? Why people don't? So I guess you got a paycheck, didn't you? You're just doing your job, right? We're all in this together. When I go to the bank, do I tell the bank the health department said it's okay? The health department said I don't have to pay you? The health department said I, I can't make a living? Hey, sir. I can't make sir. any money? Sir. Is that what I tell the sir. bank?
this guy from the health department comes, we can't do outdoor dining. We can't serve food to go. No one can sit outside. No one can sit on the fucking city bench in front of the restaurant. God damn it. What the fuck do they want us to do? We can't survive anymore, man. I can't pay the fucking bills. I'm behind on everything. I can't pay the bills. What do I tell them? The health department told me they have a job to do. Do I, do I tell them to make that? Should I tell my employees that their fucking wage is going to come from we're all in this together? The health department said so? It's fucking bullshit. I'm sick of it. I have a patio on city property. It's not even my property. And he has to come in. He wants me to be the police. He said, if anyone is sitting on a fucking bench in front of your place, you have to tell them to leave. I'm not you. That ain't my fucking job. He's going to give me a violation for that shit? Says who? Where, what's the law? You're not talking to him. I'm asking the law. What's the law? You're not talking to him. This is a health issue. It's a health department issue. You know what I'm It's a health issue, and I can't operate anymore, man. Desperate. Desperate. I can't pay my bills. I'm going to go home, sit in my fucking room, look at my kids, and say, guys, it's a matter of time before we start again. Right? The, 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 nothing we can do. We're all in this together. We'll just all starve to death and die. You guys all got a paycheck, right? City budget passed. Everyone's got their paychecks. She doesn't. The cook doesn't. My head chef just had a baby. He doesn't know if he has a job. The mortgage, I, I, I don't know how to pay it. The power bill, Edison didn't say, hey, fucking have the health department call me. Not once did Edison say, I'll talk to the health department and, and we'll let you slide on this one. Gas company, water company, no one has told me we'll let you slide. What do I do? Desperate. Fucking desperate. What do I got to do? A bunch of fucking idiots burning down LA and everyone responds. Oh, let's, do, let's, let's respond to that. Now, is that what we have to do? We all got to go march and burn the fucking city down before anyone listens? Yeah, definitely. Someone that follows the law and does everything the way it's supposed to be, I have to get this fucking desperate? Yes. Every fucking permit, paid. Health yeah, permit, paid. ABC license, paid. City permit, paid. All my permits to build the building, paid. Everything fucking paid, everything taken care of. I, I go buy the book for every fucking thing. Everything, I went by the book. Now what? I've been going by the book for the last seven fucking years, and now, hey, on a nice sunny day outside, no one can sit fucking outside. Not even on a city bench can you sit outside and drink a goddamn soda. Okay, so that was that was about nine minutes of that video clip. Okay, um, this is a rough call for the cops. This is at the same time they keep saying, "I understand, I understand, I understand," when in actuality they don't because they're still. They still get a paycheck every two weeks or whatever it is, whenever it is they get paid. Okay. This guy is a law abiding citizen, probably a great guy because he's willing to put his, he's sticking his neck out there for his employees. And this is the type of person you'd probably want to work for because he's sticking out. He's, he's doing what he, he's a good person, right? But you got this douchebag health inspector, uh, Nazi, right? Enforcing these stupid laws 
these stupid health rules, right? You're talking to a guy, I mean, this dude, the restaurant owner, right? He He's played the game. Like, he's paid all, all the fees, he's been through all the red tape, and he's playing by the rules. But yet, he gets punished for playing by the rules. And the choice of words for these cops, not good. Not good at all. They're they're actually pissing the guy even. They're pissing him off even more because the hell they know they uh, the hell that they understand. They don't understand shit. You know, and I'm 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 gonna call it for what it is because they don't understand that. They don't know what this guy is going through, trying to provide for his family and trying to help his employees provide for their family. They don't know that. They don't have. They don't hold that much responsibility. To to where they own a restaurant where they're the boss and they have to provide for their family and in turn help their employees provide for their families as well. So no, they don't they don't understand shit when it comes to that. And I hate that the choice of words are oh I understand I understand no no you don't you don't. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to talk bad on the cops. I really am not. But the choice of words is just horrible because they are still working and they still have, they still get paid, right? Bad choice of words. Now, if I was the supervisor, the I mean, you know, if I was the sergeant or something to that effect, I would tell the guy. I would take him to the side and talk to him pers- in a personable way. Because this is an effed up situation. This really is. And this is the type of stuff that pushes good people beyond the edge. So instead of saying, I understand, I understand, I understand, why don't we find help find a solution for them? Right? We can be personable. Like talking to the per- this guy. Just be personable. Like talk. Don't don't talk to him in an authoritative way. Talk to him at the same level, a man to man conversation, right? And try to figure out what a solution would be. Instead of saying, "Oh, I understand, I understand." No, <laughs> the hell you don't understand, man. Now, what to do for a solution? That I don't know. You know, um, depends on how the conversation goes with the guy. But we we can always find some some way to make something work here, right? I don't know too much stuff about the Bible, although I do, you know, I do the random read every week with you guys. And I try to read it as much as I can in my personal life. I'm still learning. But does it take... Does it honestly take for all of us to become like Job? Where everything is just taken away from us? In order for us to keep our faith in God to do the right thing? Maybe. Maybe we all have to be stripped away from things that that help us keep afloat to test our faith in the Lord and also to test us if we're able to do the right thing when we have nothing. It's a very humbling experience. I can imagine that. I'm not going to say I understand it, but it's a very hum- I can I can just just in in just stepping out of that situation and looking at it it's a very humbling experience I can tell it helps ground you too it helps it helps build your morality as well are you going to do the right thing when you have nothing I don't know I don't know. This is a rough situation. I'm not going to deny that for everybody. Except 
the health inspector. Because that person has the choice whether or not he or she wants to enforce that. They can just turn a blind eye, right? Why are we doing this to good people? Why are they doing this to good people? I, I shouldn't say we because I don't do that. I don't, I'm not a health inspector, so I don't know. You know? But why are we punishing the good people here? Why? When will it be where we can tell our supervisors, F you, right? I'm not doing that because morally that is wrong. I don't know. What would you do? Well, I mean, first off, I, I, I'm with this guy, the, the, the restaurant owner. I'm with him. He's not even being um, combative with the cops. He has he's he has a grievance, a legit grievance. He's clearly upset, and it's it's for good reason. He's upset, right? But he's not mother effing the cops. He's not being disrespectful. He's stating a very very valid point. The cops, I, it's hard for them to get empathetic to this. I don't know. I don't know. Right? I mean, it's okay to talk to somebody personally. It's okay to put your level down to talk to somebody in a normal way. I I, I would think so. What do I know? But this is what I wanted to leave you guys with at the end of this show today. I mean, what would you do? I mean... How would you feel? You know? I think we've all taken a beating this whole year. Every one of us. doesn't matter who you are. Job or no job. You know? I think we've all taken a beating. And I think it's time for each and every one of us to pick each other each other up. It's It, it really is time for us to pick each other up. Because that's what good people are supposed to do. Who knows? Maybe one day you might need the picking up. The only way you're going to get the pickup is if, you know, you ever heard of the saying, what goes around comes around? Well, pick somebody up. Don't expect anything after that. Let things happen. Right? Right? I don't know. Just a thought. So, with that being said, the bar is now closed. It's more than a passing notion I've never fallen with such devotion I can't help but wonder If it's only a dream Am I naive again? believe that things are really as they seem Can anyone explain it How to understand what's true I know I just Whenever I'm with you I can't help but wonder If you wonder about me Cause lately 
I can't help but wonder how wonderful this might be. Be. 